it's Halloween and this is a perfect opportunity to go back to the terrain set I built a while back. I know there are so many other creepy locations that I could use as inspiration, but believe me, this project might follow you around so there is no walking away from this video. So kick back, grab your Halloween candy and let's make a memorable centerpiece for this resting place. If you have seen the video about my graveyard terrain, you know that I based the look in some way on the graveyard in Dark Souls. And if you know your Souls games, you know that this series had its next evolutionary step with its spiritual successor, Elden Ring. This one is one of my all-time favorites and one of my greatest sources of inspiration when building terrain. One of the most iconic encounters are these walking mausoleums that you find in various places all around in the lands between. These things captured my imagination the moment I saw them and I knew I wanted to build something like that. Another reason I wanted to expand on my terrain set was this little package here. This was sent to me by Jonas of Bequest Miniatures. It included this multi-kit miniature set that expands his Shambling Bones range. Again, if you remember the Graveyard Terrain video, you probably remember these as well. This new multi-kit allows you to give your skeletons different hats and weapons. It's also a great source for bits if you enjoy kit bashing. Now the big news is that these, the multi-kit, as well as the older Kickstarter supported miniatures, are now available for you to buy. So if you fancy yourself a nice set of skeletons, make sure to check out the link below. Now to make this not so long story even shorter, I decided to build my own walking mausoleum with a slight twist to make it fit into the realm of the shambling bones. My own shambling mausoleum. As a first step I needed to decide on exactly how my mausoleum would look, so I went on a google search to find fitting buildings. I also needed to decide on how this mausoleum would be constructed, which I first wanted to be completely scratch built. However, in a stroke of luck I found this MDF kit by TT Combat. The so called scriptorium has a similar architecture than the mausoleums in Elden Ring and also wasn't too expensive. First of all, this would answer my first big question regarding the look. I also figured using an MDF kit and modifying it is something I haven't done before, neither on the channel nor in private. Building MDF kits like this isn't very hard. PVA isn't even mandatory for getting this together, but I would still advise using a bit of it here and there. And while I certainly agree that an experienced model builder or crafter could put this kit together easily without any instructions, it would have been nice to have a piece of paper with some instructions attached. This is easily rectified however with a visit to the TT Combat website, where you find all instructions to their kits, so it's only a minor gripe. While following the instructions, I already thought about how to modify this kit. My major problem with the MDF kits in general is that they usually have this typical MDF look. Don't get me wrong, these kits can be incredibly detailed and with a bit of extra work can look very well. But most of the time, these kits miss one vital ingredient for me. And that is texture. In my opinion, texture is the one thing that can catapult your build to the next level. Texture tells you if a building is new or old, and texture tells you whether something is wood or stone. Also from a tactical standpoint, it is texture that helps you hide mistakes or gives you more options on shortcuts for the painting process. So I had basically two options. To add singular bricks made from XPS, cork or another material, or add complete textured segments. I decided to do the latter. Sadly, I didn't own a fitting texture roller, so I opted to use thin XPS sheets, which I would later texture with a pencil and a ball pen. I 
I made my XPS sheet out of regular XPS from the hardware store. Most of you are probably familiar with this material, so I won't get to in too much detail. But if you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comments down below. With my whole wire cutter I made blocks that would cover a complete wall segment. One for the ground level, one for the first floor and one for the top floor. I then sliced 12 sheets of about 5mm thickness from each block and glued them directly onto the walls. Now you may notice that in this kit every wall segment has either a window or a door. My approach here was to simply cover up everything and then later cut out holes for one door and six windows on the ground level. Only thing to look out for is not to glue the XPS to the window frames as this would be incredibly annoying to remove later. The rest of the windows remained covered up. Honestly this was a decision based more on time than style, but in the end I think this is more fitting for a mausoleum. I also covered up these weird thin pillars with actual pillars made again from XPS. To make them fit better I used my hot wire cutter to make thin indentations to the XPS pieces. This was just a matter of holding the piece a bit longer in place and letting the hot wire do its thing. Just make sure you have a well ventilated place when you do this. After doing this again 12 times I adhered the pillars with PVA. On the first floor I also added similar XPS pieces, this time however a bit smaller and without the indentation. Now at that point it was time to have a look at the lower roof. I would argue that this is probably the biggest departure from the kit as this roof would now have to take the thicker walls and the added pillars into account. In the end I only used one half of these support pieces and also made completely new ones. These half supports were added next to the pillars while the self-made supports went directly between two pillars. With these in place I used the roof coverings of the kit cut them to size and glued them on. At around that point I also decided to leave the top floor unattached as I wanted to add some simple LED lighting later, but more on that in a bit. First I needed to add more XPS to the piece to cover up the floor on the balcony and near the roof dome. Speaking of which, I added the roof cover that comes with the kit and started to add triangular pieces made from black cardstock. These were glued on in two layers with the sharpest point showing to the top. This way I hope to get somewhat of an onion dome look. In my opinion it came out way better than I expected, though I have to admit that it's probably not very realistic. But still, we are talking about a mausoleum walking around on legs. In the end I added the base from a Whiskits miniature on top to cover up all the overlapping paper spikes. And as before I added smaller XPS pillars to cover up the seams between the wall segments. I also made this door by removing the appropriate piece from the kit and adding a few coffee stir sticks on top of it. After that I used Super Sculpey to add a bit of metal to the door. Here also came liquid Fimo into play as this stuff acts a bit like glue between the Super Sculpey and the wood. After baking this I simply added this small shield from the Shambly Bones range to act as ornament for the door. With all that in place I could finally start the probably most important but very tedious step of adding texture. As I already said I used the simple approach of using a pencil to carve in the texture and then reinforced that with a ballpoint pen. And I can tell you this took a while, so I hope you liked this video so far. I aim to get out a video every other week regarding my hobby journey while sharing some tricks and tips for your tabletop crafting and painting. So why not subscribe if you haven't already? Also if you want to support me even further, you can do so via Patreon where you can join for 3 euros or dollars a month. Here you get previews to upcoming videos, a look behind the scenes and you can vote on upcoming topics. So with that out of the way and all the texture in place, let's give this mausoleum some legs. While browsing on Amazon I stumbled across this set of plastic bones. Normally you would use it as a Halloween decoration, but the bones inside of this pack serve as ideal starting points for crafting projects. 
No wonder you see so many great projects using similar sets. This particular pack of bones came with exactly what I was looking for. A pair of feet and four bones that could be used as legs. These were however a bit too long. I didn't plan to have this project as big as a child, so I shortened each of those by cutting out the middle part with a saw. With hot glue I adhered both ends together and used the thick wire to pin the leg bones to their designated feet. At this step everything was incredibly wobbly and unstable, so I used construction adhesive to fix the joints of the legs together. For the base I used the same material I already used on my graveyard project, PVC foam board. The great thing about this is that it's cuttable with a standard utility knife, but it's still very durable. So you don't need fancy tools to get it in the right shape. You have to be careful when cutting it though, as your knife can slip. I know it's probably utility knife 101, but always move the blade away from your body. With the right base form, I added a bit of cork bark to act as small rock formations to break up the even surface. I also remembered the wall segments I used on my previous build. I especially remembered this destroyed piece. The gap on this wall fitted perfectly with the footprint of my skeleton legs. A perfectly fitting small story element for this terrain. So I added this on top of the cork and used hot glue to adhere the legs. With these in place I used the wires protruding out of them to hold a block of styrofoam in place. On top of that I added a round EPS sheet with a slightly larger diameter than the footprint of the mausoleum. This way I could guarantee a fitting surface for the mausoleum which I would add at the end. Underneath that sheet I added more and more blocks of styrofoam to add a bit of mass. To adhere all that together I used specific styrofoam glue from Uhu which also allowed me to cut everything with a handheld wire cutter to get the right shape. With the right shape I turned the piece on its head and added cork puck to cover up most of the styrofoam. Here I mostly use construction adhesive, but when that ran out I also used PVA and hot glue. I wanted a rocky but also earthy look, so I left a few areas intentionally open. Now the walking mausoleum and Elden Ring also come with a bit of vegetation on top. To reflect that I added this wood stick which would be perfect for an old and broken tree. On the base I additionally added a bit of vegetation, or better said a bit of dead vegetation in the form of this piece of wood which I found at a local crafting supply shop. The aforementioned open spots were then later filled in by sculptor mold which I mixed with a bit of brown paint. After that I turned this thing around again and used the same sculptor mold mix to fill in gaps, cover the styrofoam and add a more natural looking surface. With all that dry I added these tombstones that are also part of the Shambling Bones range. I have to admit that I would have loved these in my previous graveyard build. With these in place I mixed tiger oil with PVA, water and a bit of brown and applied this mix to the bones, the rocks and the 3D printed walls. And while I let that dry I went back to the mausoleum and started painting. Here I went with a very simple approach. First I mixed brown with PVA and applied it all over the building. PVA isn't exactly mandatory, but I like to make all my foam pieces a bit more damage resistant. Now for the real priming I used brown primer to get an overall even brown undercoat. And then I simply dry brushed the neutral grey all over the piece, which I applied rather heavily. After that I went over it with a lighter grey and subsequently with a warm off-white. This off-white looked a bit, well, off to be honest and I tried to correct this with an overall wash made with dark blue craft paint and water. And although all this was a bit accidental, the end result really worked for me. For the roof I went with the simple approach of first basing everything with Vallejo's hammered copper. I wanted a copper roof with a bit of verdigris, so to achieve this effect I first made a wash with Vallejo's jade green, applied that and waited for it to dry. Following that I repeated this step with light green blue from Vallejo's model color range. This resulted in a simple but very nice looking verdigris, at least in my opinion. The separate door which I previously primed also in brown and dry brush with off-white was then painted with dark wood and forest sprite speed paints from the army painter range. 
The steel parts were painted with the aptly titled steel paints from Vallejo. I also used this to base the window frames on the mausoleum itself. After that I dry brushed the wood on the door again with an off-white and washed the steel on the door and the windows with a Chimera Red Oxide water mix. Now to finish the building I used clear plastic sheets from miniature packages, cut them to size and roughed up one side of it. This now Mickey looking plastic was then glued to the back side of the windows. My intention here was A to add some glass to the windows and B to diffuse the light which would come from the inside after adding the LED lighting. Speaking of which, I used this simple light set I found on Amazon a while back. It is already wired and comes also with a battery pack. This is ideal for adding a bit of atmosphere to your pieces. I simply attached the wiring with painters tape to the inside of the mausoleum and with that I went back to the platform. After priming the whole construction with brown I added a bit of green and also turquoise in certain areas. Green for simply breaking up the monotony of the brown and the turquoise for the walls and the gravestones. Now while painting this something happened I dreaded the whole time. From the beginning the platform was a bit unbalanced and by adding more and more material to it, it began to lean over to the front until the legs simply collapsed. So to counteract that I added a third stabilizing element with this stick which would simply look like a tree that is about to be uprooted by the shambling mausoleum. I pinned the stick with a thick wire and attached that to the platform. The connection with the ground was achieved with a heavy dab of hot glue. And to hide the seams and this small amount of hot glue, I simply used sculptor mold. I also hit the breaking points of the joints with a bit of texture paste. From here on out I just followed my own instruction from the graveyard video. I painted the rocks, the trees, the tombstones and the walls to match exactly with the rest of the set. The only real new element here were the legs which I painted with turquoise and Vallejo sky blue. This I thinned down so I could use it via the airbrush. With that I focused mainly on the most exposed parts. In the end I added a light dry brush with an off white to finish the bones. As the last finishing touch I covered the whole base in PVA and added pre-mixed basing sand, a bit of coarse grit and fine turf as a ground texture. I also repeated that for the top of the platform. After I let that dry overnight I applied a few flower tufts and static grass via an applicator. And with that this mausoleum was ready to shamble with the rest of the bones. A mausoleum with bony legs. If you think about it too hard it's a pretty bonkers idea but at least these are not chicken legs. But honestly I'm super happy with the result. Also you might have noticed that I didn't adhere the mausoleum to the top of the platform. That was a decision that came later down the line as I was so happy with how the mausoleum turned out, I wanted it as a separate element so I could use it differently. This has also the added benefit of giving me the option to put different buildings on top of the platform. Now what do you think? Did I make the right decision or should I have glued everything together? Let me know in the comments and if you liked this video please leave a like and share it with your friends and like minded folks. Also why not check out this video where I built a bunch of tabletop houses that could also be put on top of the platform. I hope to see you in the next video and until then farewell fellow adventurers.